performance report with Coco Paving and the company president Rocky Coco. The project was the 401 near Windsor, Ontario, Canada, a major shipping route for trucks carrying goods to and from the United States and Canada. The project features a new Gomeco PS2600 belt placer spreader, a new generation GHP2800 in the pan dowel bar inserter paver, and a TC600 texture cure machine. Also on the project was a new Commander 3 slip forming variable barrier. Coco is a family owned construction company. Well, Coco Paving was uh, originally started by um, my father uh, back in the 60s uh, under a different name. And uh, now we're into a second generation of Coco family running it, as well as my father still is uh, an active part of the business. There's a third generation running around too, I understand. Yeah, there's a third generation. My son Anthony spent uh, an awful lot of the summer with the uh, Gomeco service people uh, putting the uh, 2800 and the 2600 together. This is the first phase of the reconstruction of the 401, which is 6.4 kilometers. Coco is the general contractor. Yeah, we are the general, we're the general contractor on the, on the project, uh, and uh, we do have a sub that's doing the bridges for us, but everything else we are doing ourselves, um, the concrete placement, the earthwork, the sewers, um, it's all in-house. The biggest concern of the entire project was the barrier wall. And a new four-track Commander 3 answered the call. Well, I think that was, out of the whole job, I think that was my, my biggest concern was, was getting that barrier wall to stand up. Um, we are in three super elevated curves, so the barrier wall does become variable um, with the grade difference of up to I think it's two and a half feet in some of the uh, some of the areas I think that was the, the most challenging part of the whole project was how we were gonna get that concrete to sit up there six feet high actually it went very well we used the 9500 to feed the concrete to it and uh, the commander 3 with the uh, variable uh, mold that was made uh, worked out excellent the 9500 was used to trim and prepare the grade so an RTP 500 was called in to help in feeding the Commander 3. In planning the paving of the roadway, Coco Construction first chose the Gomeco PS 2600 to accommodate the placement of the concrete from the end dump operation in front of the paver. Yeah, the 2600 has been excellent where we can end dump right into the, uh, the side belt on the 2600 and it places the concrete, spreads and places the concrete for us in front of the 2800. Uh, when we were doing a kilometer a day, we were doing about uh, 200 meters an hour. An hour. We are just under 200 meters an hour of production. Rocky said the major point is to have a good ground guy. That's the key to having a successful operating piece of equipment. Someone who can move the trucks in and out. The new generation GHP 2800 IDBI was chosen for the paver. Due to the tight deadline on the project and the job site logistics, Coco had an IDBI system for the two-lane paving and a second system for the single-lane paving. With the dual telescoping capabilities on the paver, they could change from one to the next and only lose a day of paving. Originally when we, we tendered the project, we, we spent a lot of time looking at it to see if we could do a three-lane pour, being that the highway is now three lanes in each direction and we were looking to see if it would have been our preferred choice to do all three lanes at once. However, um, haul routes and uh, I mean the large ditches that are on each side of the highway and, and the traffic, the, it was impossible to get uh, and not being able to drive on the subgrade. With uh, Gomeco's technical staff, we came up with a, um, you know, a, a, a cross section where we do two lanes at a time. And then the, uh, the other problem was that we were so much under the gun and time, I mean, we didn't have any time that we could afford. So what we decided to do is, is just make up a completely new IDBI for the third lane, which was a partially paved shoulder along with it of a half a meter. So we made up an IDBI that uh, we could use for, for that one. 
We asked Rocky if there was a major concern about the IDBI when their team was considering the mechanization and the computerization that takes place in planting the bars. Well, I think that's, that's a major thing. I mean, you've got a lot of questions, uh, especially you see videos and, and you're really not up front seeing one operator. You see, you see everything through a video and that was a very, uh, I mean, when you made the decision to go with it, you're thinking, well, I mean, there's a lot of me mechanical parts here. There's going to be a lot of breakdowns. Is this going to hold us up? Or, I mean, is this going to be the right decision? And, uh, I mean, uh, you hear a lot of horror stories with the DBIs, and you just wanted to make sure that you didn't end up being one of those horror stories. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you, it, uh, I mean, with Gamaco's technical staff, we can't talk enough of uh, how, how they helped us and, uh, I mean, how they trained us. And you can check and double check, and uh, it's... Uh, I mean, we can't talk enough of how well the, the machines performed on the project. We asked Rocky if they penciled out the savings with the IDBI, and he said they simply didn't have time to nail down the baskets. Yeah, well, the, the DVI, I, I think our, all our crew, because all these guys have paved, uh, we've got a 2500 and a 2000 and uh, once they saw that they didn't have to put baskets down anymore, they were elated. Uh, I don't think anyone wanted to nail and lug baskets around and... Uh, the DBIs worked out fantastic. Yeah, well, with the with the project that we had and the time frame we have, um, it doesn't give you a very big window to pave, and and the time that it would take, being that we we've got an asphalt layer underneath, and I think today's day where you see that the paver is right on on the on the tail of the asphalt paver, um, we don't have that time to be able to nail baskets down, and the labor cost to nail that baskets down now. Economically, we felt that the uh, DBI would pay itself off over the length of the contract. At the original startup of the IDBI, the ministry had joints removed the width of the two lanes to verify the horizontal and vertical placement of the bars. Rocky said they cut the bars in half so they could evaluate both faces. He said not only were the measurements right on, but the consolidation was amazing. That came out very well. That, uh, we, uh, the ministry, under their specifications, wanted to ensure that the uh, DBI was placing the bars at the proper uh, depth and uh, alignment. And uh, uh, we did a full, full cut through. Um, we cut the bars in half so we could look at both faces. And uh, we measured through and we were uh, right on. The most interesting part about it is that the consolidation around the bars was, was excellent. And uh, the matrix of the aggregate were very good around the bars. It wasn't like you had grout all around the bars or it was, it was the matrix was really good. I mean, you couldn't tell that uh, that was inserted. Rocky said the aggregate had to be imported, the cement was a difficult commodity, and the water had to be heated because of the cooler temperatures. Our area here in, uh, in the southwestern part of Ontario is very, very um, challenged for aggregate. So uh, the MTO, the Ministry of Transportation of Ontario, has a very uh, hard spec on aggregates, and uh, a lot of our aggregates uh, are at least a two and a half, three hour haul away uh, each direction. And, um, and then all the specialty aggregates that are used in the asphalt and concrete production are all imported by, uh, by boat to a dock from the uh, northern parts of, uh, of Ontario. Uh, what about uh, cement? Is, is cement a problem getting? Yeah, yeah cement problem. was a, an issue uh, originally when we uh, we bid the project. Um, we were told by all the cement suppliers that it would be a very, very difficult uh, commodity to get. Um, we can't talk enough of St. Mary Cement. They were they came through, and uh, when they were running low, they, I mean, they they kept us on on the, the front burner to make sure that we had uh, the cement to do the project with. What was, uh, what is the next design for the pavement? Uh, we went with a really high cement. Uh, we, we were running 25% slag up until the cold temperatures came in. Um, but we went with a high cementitious ratio uh, for the simple fact that in three days we had to be on top of it with construction equipment in order to construct the third lane and cons construct our, uh, our center medians. And uh, the, the project just did not give you that seven day curing time where where uh, you had to wait seven days to obtain the strength, so we did uh, we did bump up the cement uh, content. And then yesterday you went without the slag at all. 
Yeah, we've been, uh, actually we've been since last Monday without slag. We went down to 15% slag. We were running 25% on the other side in the middle of summer. But now with the cooler temperatures, we went down to 15. And then once the temperatures at night got below uh, five degrees Celsius, then we decided to go, go to 100% uh, uh, cement. How did the uh, paver react to that? Is there any thing that changes when you change that mix design? Or? I think the, the biggest problem we had is now with the cooler temperatures and the facilities we have, uh, you know, you're trying to heat water and, and, and trying to pave, so you got to keep that happy balance because when you heat the water too much, it just does not like to go through the paver. You're heating the water and adding it to the mix? Yeah, we're heating the water right now, and we're just getting it up, uh, and we're trying to keep keep our temperatures enough that we can sustain a, uh, a mix that's acceptable, but uh, not get it too hot where we're we're getting into all kinds of trouble putting down uh, concrete that's superheated. Yeah. What uh, what type of production have you been getting? Like, uh, what was uh, the best day you had? Uh, we were doing a kilometer in the, in the summertime. Now, because of the cool temperatures and we can't get going in the morning, we're we're averaging around three quarters of a kilometer a day. Um, the other day we did get a kilometer, but it did warm up a bit, and we ran an extra extra hours but if if the the temperatures are fine and it's not a constraint uh, a kilometer is uh, is basically what we average this has been a performance report with rocky coco and coco construction of windsor canada featuring the new generation ghp 2800 idbi and gomeco paving support equipment our sales support i mean uh, the technical support has been fantastic I mean, uh, we've got a great group of guys. Everybody that's come up uh, have been absolutely fantastic and worked with our people and very, very accommodating. Uh, they showed them, answered any questions we had. If they couldn't answer the question, they'd call back and, and get the proper answer. Um, we just had uh, great support, excellent support from Gameco. We, we can't talk enough. Uh, I mean, even uh, when we turned around and came down this side, uh, we uh, we talked to Brad and uh, Brad uh, made arrangements where uh, we brought the uh, you know Dale back down just to take a look and make sure that everything was set up properly and that our guys did it because it was their first switch over on their own and make sure that everything was done correctly and it, it excellent support. Gomeco, the worldwide leader in concrete paving technology.